you never realized this about Dances with Wolves. Uncover the amazing secrets that lie behind the making of Dances with Wolves. This 1990 epic Western movie, directed by and starring Kevin Costner, is based on Michael Blake's 1988 book of the same title. The film was highly successful at the box office and earned 12 Oscar nominations, out of which it won seven awards. Discover all the intriguing behind-the-scenes information about what makes Dances with Wolves such an iconic movie. It all began with a novel that no one wanted to publish. After reading about the Plains Indians, Kevin Costner and Michael Blake, who had met in an acting class, discussed the concept of Dances with Wolves. Despite no one being eager to publish it as a novel, Costner suggested that this be their first step before pitching it as a screenplay to the studios. Blake wrote the book over several months and submitted it to many publishers, however, none accepted his work. And after receiving more than 30 rejections, he finally found a small publisher called Fawcett that was willing to bet on it. Why Costner Reached Out to Other Directors Before agreeing to take on the job himself as a director, Costner tried getting other directors on board by sharing the script with three well-known figures in the industry unknown to date. Unfortunately, they all wanted to change an essential element of the film. Costner revealed that one desired to remove a Civil War sequence at the beginning, and another pushed for a non-white romantic interest instead of resorting to stereotypes. Unable to compromise, Costner decided to take up directing duties himself. Kevin Costner embarked on an audacious journey by handling the majority of his stunts. According to producer Jim Wilson, the actor-director performed approximately 95% of his character's writing, shooting, fighting, and dancing. While this was impressive, the rest of the production team was concerned because he was both the star and the film director. During one scene of buffalo hunting, he was thrown from his horse, which frightened everyone on set. Miraculously, he emerged unscathed afterward and pushed through with filming. The Highest Grossing Western Movie of All Time Dances with Wolves was released amid an already popular Western genre, but it helped modernize and reinvigorate it. It grossed a whopping $184 million domestically in six months, far outpacing the previous most successful Western films. Even 25 years on, it remains the highest grossing Western movie and only edges out True Grit for first place. Yet, despite its immense financial success, Dances with Wolves never reached number one at the box office charts. Costner became honorary member of the Sioux. Many of the Sioux appreciated Kevin Costner's depiction of their tribe's day-to-day -day life in the film and honored him by making him an honorary member of the tribe. During the induction ceremony, he was presented with a feather to wear in his hair and a hand-woven quilt. Unfortunately, he fell out of favor with some Sioux after purchasing several hundred acres in South Dakota's Black Hills and announcing his building plans. Fortunately, he abandoned the plan in 2013. How Meticulous Planning Was Required for Buffalo Hunting No movie mastery was used when filming the buffalo hunt, which was very impressive. A real herd of over 3,500 buffalo was found running across the plain. If they were lucky, the crew might get one chance per day to film the swarm. The animals had to be herded first, and as stated by filmmaker Jim Wilson, the tractor trailers tried to herd the buffalo at 5 in the morning in the naive hope that they'd be in a good situation by 11 at most. They used 20 Jeep Wranglers, a helicopter, and 10 pickup trucks with cameras mounted to film. As the film progressed, more than a quarter of Blake's script had to be translated into Sioux Lakota. Although some people would prefer to avoid the hassle and have everything spoken in English, this was different here. One of the most pressing issues was that only a few people knew the Lakota language, let alone well enough to translate it. Nevertheless, Costner discovered Doris Leader Charge, a Lakota language instructor at South Dakota's Sinte Glaska University. He emailed her the script, which she translated in just a few weeks. She later became the production dialogue coach and even played the role of chief's wife, Pretty Shield. Twist about the relationship between writer Michael Blake and Costner Costner attempted to get Blake to work with many different studios before he began work on Dances with Wolves. However, in one of the interviews, Costner revealed that Blake made the entire process difficult by arguing with the representatives at the filming production. I started to lose patience with him, he says. Their relationship worsened from there afterward, 
Blake abandoned and later left for Arizona to wash the dishes at a Chinese restaurant while completing his book. When Costner finally agreed to read it, he was astounded, saying, it was the best and most accurate idea for a movie I'd ever read. Lakota actors lacked perfection. Even though Doris Leader Charge did an excellent job teaching Lakota to many people who had no prior knowledge of the language before filming, some details were still left out. For example, Lakota is a difficult dialect to learn, and it even has gender-specific speech, which means that some words have different meanings for both men and women. The gendered speech was omitted because it would have been too difficult to integrate. Those who saw the film and spoke the same dialect found it amusing that the male tribesmen spoke in female dialects throughout the movie. The Appearance of Costner's Daughter As a child role, Kevin Costner's daughter, Annie Costner, played Stands with a Fist in the film. In a dream sequence, she can be seen fleeing the Pawnee who murdered her family. She looks over both of her shoulders as she runs. This was due to Costner telling her to check her left, but unfortunately, she was too young to know her left from right. At the time of production, she was only six years old. The film temporarily aided Orion Pictures. Though RoboCop, Platoon, and Caddyshack were major successes then, the production company wasn't doing well in the 1980s. In reality, they were going through the worst phase. During the movie's release at the box office, the production company was down by 50% and a shocking debt of $50 million. Although Dances with Wolves was a huge success and helped keep the company afloat, it wasn't enough. Only a year later, the company declared bankruptcy and was eventually purchased by MGM. Sequel to Dancing with Wolves Another saucy secret is yet to reveal, The Holy Road, a sequel novel to Dances with Wolves, has yet to be adapted for film or television. It was published in 2001 by Blake, and he continues to follow John Dunbar, now a total Sioux warrior, as he tries to protect the tribe from invading white settlers. The novel was praised for depicting westward expansion and the struggles of Native American tribes. However, while it appears to be a good fit for a film or a new series, it's yet to come out. Costner Whooping Investment in Production House Sadly, the film went significantly over budget than Costner's estimation, forcing him to dip into his savings to make up for the initial $15 million budget. As a result, there were rumors that the film would be a Western flop, similar to Heaven's Gate, with some even referring to it as Heaven's Gate. Despite this, the movie won the Best Picture Oscar for a Western for the first time since Cimarron in 1931. Costner's investment also paid off with an estimated $40 million earned. Real Life Characters in Dances with Wolves There was a real John Dunbar in the movie, a pro-Native American missionary who formed alliances with the Pawnee in the 1800s. He bears no resemblance to the character in the film. Stands with Fist, on the other hand, was based on a real person. Cynthia Ann Parker, a young girl kidnapped by the Comanche in 1836 when she was only 10 years old, inspired her character. She remained with the tribe until 1860 when Texas Rangers apprehended her. Major Delays While Production Shooting Due to the unpredictable weather of the South Dakota Plains, working with real wolves, and the complexity of the Native American battle scenes, there were numerous delays during production. On the other hand, the epic bison hunt sequence was the most difficult to shoot. This scene took over three weeks to film and required 100 Native American stunt riders, not to mention a stampeding herd of thousands of bison. Even so, it was not in vain and is regarded one of the most breathtaking scenes in film history. Shoot that complicated the film But even though this film appears to have been shot in a single central location, that's not the case. More than 30 locations in South Dakota and Wyoming were used for filming. The script called for 3,500 live buffaloes, a dozen teepees, 300 horses, and enough Native American extras to populate a reasonably sized village. To level it all off, the climate changed dramatically from July to November, ranging from 20 to over 100 degrees. The Reason for Fort Sedgwick's Abandonment Dunbar is sent to Fort Sedgwick after requesting to be stationed in the West. But even so, when he arrived, he discovered that the fort had been abandoned and was in terrible shape. The movie never clarifies why Fort Sedgwick is in bad shape, but a particular omitted scene does. 
The scene significantly explains that garrisons encamped, stole their horses, and then abandoned them. They withstood numerous Native American threats and were waiting for a supply train and reinforcement material that never arrived. The soldiers then left their post just as Dunbar arrived. To work with, the wolves were temperamental. To play Two Socks, the wolf that Dunbar befriends, the producers used two wolves named Buck and Teddy. Although these were thought to be taut and obedient wolves, they were far from easy to work with. Handlers needed a lot of patience and meat scraps to get the wolves to cooperate. During the shoot, one of the trainers was even bitten by a wolf, so Costner stepped in to finish the scene. Costner invested his own money. The film got way more expensive than expected, and Costner had to pay a little extra to complete it. How much more is there? With all of the bison and wolves and figuring out how to film outside, the $15 million budget was quickly exceeded. That wouldn't deter Costner. To finish the film, the man had to pay an additional $3 million out of his pocket. Says a lot about how badly he wanted this thing to be finished and done. Elderly woman to perform stands in the fist. Whereas most hit movies depict an older man falling in love with a younger woman, here Costner wanted to take a different approach. He wishes a full-grown and mature woman to play Stands with a Fist, the white Sioux woman who helps Dunbar integrate into the community while they fall in love. In the final moment, the role went to 37-year-old Mary McDonnell, who effortlessly learned her Lakota lines and convincingly relearned English in the film. Her performance earned her an Oscar nomination and widespread acclaim. Costner made a fortune. Costner began to see money pour in like a flood after the film took off at the box office. The actor would profit more than $40 million, so it's a good thing he gave them those $3 million.